Hi, welcome to Celebrating Culture. Louisiana has a great history, and one way to learn it is through our museums. In this episode, we're gonna take you to some of the best museums in the state. In Patterson, Louisiana, there's the Wydell Williams Museum. This is where Louisiana showcases the fact that the fastest planes in the world in the 1930s were being made in Louisiana. Then we're gonna go to the Great River Road Museum in Darrow, Louisiana. It tells the story of life along the Mississippi River from the Gulf of Mexico to Baton Rouge. It's a great way to learn what was going on in Louisiana from 1800s through the 1900s. Right next door to the Great River Road Museum in Darrow is Homer's House and Gardens. 35 acres of lavish gardens, three restaurants with an award-winning chef, plus one of the best art collections in the state of Louisiana. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Our news spent five years touring Louisiana. We've interviewed countless numbers of people, the people that make it happen, that put on Mardi Gras, the chefs, the artists, the backbone of Louisiana. We've taken those interviews and made a show called Celebrating Culture. But we've also taken those interviews and put them in a tour app. New Orleans Insider Tours. To download the apps, all you have to do is point your phone at the flow code in the camera mode. Once you have the app downloaded, you'll have access to putting together the best game plan to experience in Louisiana. You can start with Little Palermo, which is 50 points of interest on the Italian community, and then go to Statue Stories and Spirits, over 150 stops in the French Quarter and CBD. Where to dine in New Orleans, what rooftop bars give you the best view, how to see the Gulf of Mexico from the coastal towns, driving up to the Bonnie and Clyde Museum near Shreveport, are up to Vicksburg. New Orleans and Louisiana are must-see for everyone, and there's so much to see. So we hope you enjoy it, and as we say here, let the good times roll. Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're coming to you today from New Orleans Lakefront Airport, and I'm with Ashley Franklin, who is the Special Projects Coordinator for the state of Louisiana, for tourism as well. And you're, Ashley, you're in Morgan City area, Acadiana. In New Orleans, we actually have the Wydell Williams hangar, but the museum, tell us what's in the museum. So the museum, I'm happy to say, has replicas of many of the monumental planes that made such a big imprint on the aviation industry. We have a replica of the 92 flown by Jim Hazlip and his wife, Mae Hazlip. We also have Roscoe Turner's 121 Gilmore Lion, and we have a 22, one of Wydell Williams' blue planes that actually went against what was known as the typical color scheme of the Weedell Williams Air Service at the time. And of course, we have a replica of his Model 45 as well. When you go to that museum, you really get a feel for what 1930s racing was. Yes, you do. In fact, uh, our video even has a bit of a flight stimulation effect to it. Winds that come on at certain times, and it really kind of lets you experience the intensity of those air races, and sometimes the danger of them as well. So come to our site, enjoy all of the artifacts that we have including trophies from the 1930s races. Now, Jimmy Woodell, his life is, is unbelievable, what he did. Yes, he was well known for a lot of things. In his early days, he was known for barnstorming, which was actual stunts on airplanes uh, done in the air, and there was no CGI back then, so everything was done for real. He was also a very famous racer in his own right. He sold Harry Williams an airplane and also offered him pilot lessons. Harry Williams loved all things fast. He loved fast cars, so racing planes seemed to be the next thing in line for him. A couple years later, they started the Weedell Williams Air Service, which became very prominent in the 1930s. In 1932, three Weedell Williams racers took home first, second, and third place in the Bendix Air Races. Jimmy Weedell broke the three-flag record. The three-flag record was crossing three countries. That included Mexico, the United States, and Canada. In 1933, Jimmy Weedell actually broke the ground speed record at 305 miles per an hour at the Chicago International Air Races. Now, was there a husband and wife team going on? There was. So that was Jim Hazlip and his wife, May Hazlip. In fact, it was Jim Hazlip winning those 1932 Bendex races that secured a spot with his wife, May Hazlip, competing in the women's tournament. Tell me how these races happened. There were a variety of different ways to do it. Um, sometimes they were speed dashes, which were more of straight lines. Other times, obstacles were put in place, some um, pylons that they had to circle around. Uh, Roscoe Turner learned the hard way that if you cut cut any corners or didn't circle any pylons, you were disqualified. And in fact, he was set to win first place at one race, but was disqualified after being named the winner of that race because he forgot to circle a pylon. And so all these planes are flying, racing, going around like a racetrack, like we think today of cars, but they're doing it with airplanes. Correct.
Correct. <laughs> and then 1934, the airport opens here. Correct, yes, that was the opening of the Shushan Airport, as it was called at the time. Went hand in hand with the first Pan American air races. But Jimmy doesn't have much of a history after that. Unfortunately, he doesn't. It was actually a routine training flight with one of his students that went horribly awry and resulted in his death in 1934. Harry Williams doesn't live much longer. In 1936, Harry Williams himself passed away. At the time of his death, Harry Williams had a no competition contract with the Army Air Corps developing a fighter plane for them. It was a descendant of his Model 45. It was called the XP-34. And when he passed away, those plans and contract died with him. Now, I've heard also that those plans ended up in Japan. I would say that's a little speculation at this point. That was said by a credible source, evidently a member of the XP-34 team, and that's something that I'm actually interested in and have been digging into a little bit myself recently. It obviously is a very intriguing story to think that the Japanese Zero gets its origin in prints designed in Patterson, Louisiana. It really is. I mean, that plane could outmaneuver any other planes. That that area we think about is Cyprus. Tell me about that. Yes, yeah, so Louisiana is well known for its lumber boom, which lasted from the 1880s to the late 1920s. And Patterson is home to not only the largest Cypress sawmill industry at the time in the state of Louisiana, but at one point in the entire world. And Frank B. Williams was the one who managed that. And there's a museum now where you can learn about this history. Yes, the Cypress Sawmill Museum, which is part of the Weedell Williams Aviation and Cypress Sawmill Museum in Patterson. Now, is there a connection between the two? There is, yes. So Frank B. Williams, the owner of the Cypress Sawmills, he went into the Cypress industry in 1872. In 1929, his son, Harry Williams, went into the Weedell Williams Air Service partnership with Jimmy Weedell. This is Patterson, which is not too far from Morgan City and Berwick. They have a great festival every year. Patterson, Berwick, and Morgan City come together every year to have their annual Shrimp and Petroleum Festival. As I understand it, the Shrimp and Petroleum Festival is recognized as the most unique type for a festival in America. Surely you wouldn't necessarily expect those two things to go together, but that partnership has existed since 1963. So as I understand, Ashley, large jumbo shrimp get discovered in the Gulf of Mexico. A Sicilian family that's living in Tampa moves to Patterson to start shrimping. And the shrimp industry booms for Louisiana. We love our shrimp down here. And then we have the shrimp festival. So tell me about the area where the festival happens. So the Long Allen Bridge, you might recognize from the 1969 movie, Easy Rider. Dennis Hopper and Peter Fonda were seen riding their motorcycles from Morgan City to Berwick Bay in that film. And that bridge is still operating today. People love to go where movies were shot and they say people were shot. Morganza actually last year had an event for the 50th anniversary of Easy Rider as well where you could take pictures with some of the local actors that were in the movie. They had about 300 motorcycles show up and they had a great display for Easy Rider. I mean, Easy Rider, it was filmed in New Orleans, it's filmed in Morgan City, it's filmed in Morganza. It is part of our culture, it seems. Also, we have ties to the Tarzan film of 1918, which was the first screen adaptation of the Tarzan story. A lot of people allow you rent kayaks to go kayaking on the bayou. Oh yes, absolutely. And there are a lot of uh, wonderful bayous. Bayou Lafouche, Bayou Tesh, also the beautiful Atchafalaya River goes right through the Patterson area. And then Mr. Charlie. Yes, Mr. Charlie. Um, I've had the pleasure of going there. It's now a museum that you can actually visit. Mr. Charlie was the first offshore oil rig in the 1940s. So Ashley, if people want to know more, is there a website they can go to? Yes, um, they can go to the LouisianaStateMuseum.org where they can learn about our our two southern sites, the Weedell Williams Aviation and Cypress Sawmill Museum, the E.D. White Historic Site, as well as our seven other museums. Ashley, I want to thank you for being on the show. I really encourage people to come out and see you guys. Oh, well, thank you so much, and thank you for having me on the show today. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Celebrating Culture. Hi, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Culture. Awe News has interviewed hundreds of people and produced dozens of episodes for local broadcasting of awesome people doing great things to inspire us all. If you'd like to watch a specific interview, please visit our YouTube channel and subscribe. Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're here today at the Great River Road Museum outside Darrow, Louisiana. And I'm with Jim Blanchard, 
Jim is a phenomenal architect and landscape designer, mostly known in New Orleans, but he's taken on a great project here in Dara. Jim, welcome to the show. Charles, thank you for being here. How long have you been working on this project? It was a dream. We started about 10 years ago to develop this as a project for a museum, dealing with the Corps of Engineers, the river, the state, the federal government. But finally, we got it approved. We're very proud of it. It was worth the 10 years. <laughs> it's an amazing accomplishment. This originally was designed of a steamboat. Steamboat was so important back then. It changed the whole economy of the United States. It was like the invention that changed everything the steam engine and then the steamboat to be able to travel people and merchandise all through the waterways of America. So originally it was just steamboat was pretty much the main thought, but then it grew to the entire Mississippi River, the culture, the land, the people, the industries, the architecture, religion, a little bit of everything from pretty much Baton Rouge to the mouth of the river. We now have acquired the figures from the Conti Wax Museum. Yes, the Conti Museum closed about five years ago. The wax models were saved and they were put in storage. And we were lucky enough recently to acquire the wax models. We're just getting into putting them out now and taking them one by one, reattaching the arms that go to each one, the heads. It works really nice because the Wax Museum told a great story of the history of Louisiana, a very complete story. We are working that in with our exhibits and it's helping to show our exhibits and our stories. It's making it very real for a lot of people to see figures and to know that was a real person. As I walk through the front door. In the design of the building, you're coming into pretty much a lobby with a pilot house, the grand staircases. So kind of the feeling that you enter a grand boat or a grand hotel or anything back then. And then from there, you enter into the museum. The main exhibit in the museum is following River Road from New Orleans to Baton Rouge on the East Bank. So you see all the places that were along the river, most of them. And then on the other side of the exhibit, you come back and it's from Baton Rouge to New Orleans on the West Bank of the river. So for the first time, you can take that journey and actually see a lot of things that most people have never heard of. Buildings, places, towns, settlements. We really like for the person viewing it to interpret it because everyone is gonna interpret it according to what they know and their life and their knowledge. We don't want to ever say that our interpretation becomes history. It's just an interpretation. Sure. And you have a lot of fun. You have Huey Long and Edward Edwards. Edwards and Huey Long at the same table, which was impossible, two different time periods. But Huey Long was a big gambler. And then you have Edwin Edwards, known all over the world for his gambling and him pushing gambling in Louisiana. And we also, next to them, we have Bernard DeMarini and Governor Claiborne at a craps table playing cards. I don't think people realize how important New Orleans was to the United States back then. Before the Civil War, you had New York and New Orleans. New York had more buildings, more people, bigger space. New Orleans had all the monumental buildings, the palaces, the massive hotels, the massive public buildings, all the opera houses and theaters. New York didn't have all that. New Orleans built the first two great hotels in America in 1830s. Average hotels back then were 20 to 30 rooms. And New Orleans built the St. Charles and the St. Louis Hotel with hundreds and hundreds of rooms in each one. The world had never seen anything like it. You know, the St. Charles Hotel had a dome that was 200 feet up in the air. Nothing in New York was that tall. And then it burned in the 1850s. And a few years later, they redesigned the United States Capitol with almost the same exact dome and portico. The U.S. Capitol is almost a copy of the version of the St. Charles Hotel. That hotel is never talked about in American architectural history. It's been forgotten. And it's odd that, you know, here was this most powerful buildings and New Orleans is not really talked about. It's the deep south. Yes. And it was not really considered America.
So you have a riverboat collection as well, models. Yes, we do, quite a large collection. And also recently, the Maritime Museum in Baton Rouge, which is the USS Kid, they have just donated to us all of their earlier maritime pieces. Do you have some great Rex memorabilia? We have the entire costume from Rex of 1916. We also have the wax mannequins of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, who the famous scene where they went and they bowed to Rex, which was quite an ordeal back then for real royalty to bow to New Orleans royalty. And then we also have the wax model of Duke Alexei of Russia, who visited Mardi Gras in Carnival. Tell me about this room we're in now. Well, this is our cafe here at the museum, and we've named it Dixie. And one of the reasons why is to tell the story of Dixie. Dixie's a word that is overused today. It was overused back then. Back then, when the steamboats would go down the Mississippi River towards New Orleans, when they approached the Little Red Church at Destrehan, St. Charles Borromeo, that was where they signaled the boats to blow their whistles so they could pay off the men on the boat. And the men were paid off in the French Dix notes, D-I-X, French for 10. So from that point south became known as the land of Dixie. So really the land of Dixie is between New Orleans and Baton Rouge south to New Orleans. And then everyone took it and it became the whole south. And then behind me you'll see here, this is a mural that was purchased at auction. And it was originally done for the Empire State Building when it was constructed. And we actually designed this part of the building to fit this painting. And it's been rolled up and stored for about 50 years. And the river boats are gonna be pulling into here. Yes. We're in the process process of working with Viking and other cruise lines where they will dock here daily, where all their guests will come over and spend the day here and enjoy the property. And we just had our dedication of the bridge. We we're very happy with Tracy from the Ascension Parish Tourism Department, along with Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. We selected the name of the Sweet Spot. Sweet Spot! which really describes Louisiana, describes Ascension Parish, and just gives a nice touch to how we can you know, promote our area. And with that, we created a drink. We created it based on Louisiana sugar and all the sweetness of Louisiana. We came up with the Louisiana Sweet Spot, a drink available here. So if somebody wants to look up the museum, is there a website? The Great River Road Museum, and then you can also look up under homeshouse.com. Thank you for the years you've spent creating this great experience to tell Louisiana history. It's an amazing place, not just for New Orleans, but for Louisiana and really for the South. You tell the story so well of life on the Mississippi and how it goes from 1500s to really today. And the food here is incredible. To dine, to just take your time and absorb the gardens, the art, the history. Our biggest issue here is getting people to realize what's here so they can come, locals, people from other countries, come here and visit and enjoy what we have here to show. You can spend the whole day, spend the evening, have dinner, spend the night, have breakfast in the morning. We offer quite a bit here. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more of Celebrating Culture. Our News spent five years touring Louisiana. We've interviewed countless numbers of people. The people that make it happen, that put on Mardi Gras, the chefs, the artists, the backbone of Louisiana. We've taken those interviews and made a show called Celebrating Culture. But we've also taken those interviews and put them in a tour app, New Orleans Insider Tours. To download the apps, all you have to do is point your phone at the flow code in the camera mode. Once you have the app downloaded, you'll have access to putting together the best game plan to experience in Louisiana. You can start with Little Palermo, which is 50 points of interest on the Italian community, and then go to Statue Stories and Spirits, over 150 stops in the French Quarter and CBD. Where to dine in New Orleans, what rooftop bars give you the best view, how to see the Gulf of Mexico from the coastal towns, driving up to the Bonnie and Clyde Museum near Shreveport, or up to Vicksburg. New Orleans and Louisiana are must see for everyone, and there's so much to see. So we hope you enjoy it, and as we say here, let the good times roll.
Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're coming to you today from Homus House and Gardens up by Dura, Louisiana, and I'm with Kevin Kelly, who is the owner of Homus House. Kevin, welcome to the show. Welcome. This is your passion. When did you acquire Homus House? I bought it in 2003, and since then, we've been just renovating it and creating new gardens, creating new attractions, restaurants, ballrooms, anything to attract people. Tell me about the gardens. We have 38 acres of gardens. We've got the most beautiful live oak trees imaginable. Most of them are in the 600 year category. Most people think the, the trees were planted when they built the house, but the Homas Indians were here and that's why the house is named Homas House. Homas Indians were here since about 1200 and they planted the trees. You might not know it, but these trees right here are 85 foot tall. Live oak trees are supposedly only grow to 55 foot, but these are so old. And our gardens were always full of colorful, tropical plants, but it's partially the statuary and the different ornamentation that we have in the gardens that make it so enjoyable. But then we have our ponds. And you've got wildlife that seemingly love that pond. We've got swans, we've got ducks, we've got peacocks, all kinds of animals are wandering around. We have a few owls, we have an eagle that's living here now. On the grounds where we're standing right now in front of the house, you actually have dining here. Yeah, we love to have great big dinner parties, wine tastings, dinners with pairings. So at one long table here, we can see 200 people. And then of course we can do other tables around for the holidays like Mother's Day, Easter, Thanksgiving. We do large buffets on the front lawn and they are just wonderful. But we have backup facilities. So if the weather's not nice, it can move in, your event's not canceled. We do great weddings out here. The brides love walking down this alleyway of oaks and getting married on the front porch of the house. In fact, my two dogs got married here. It's a big canvas and you create what you want on this canvas. Yeah, you have to back up the dining great chefs and you also have an indoor dining that is, you have several options. We actually have three restaurants now. One is Latiel's Landing, that's a high-end tasting menu. Chef Jeremy Langlois is our executive chef and he has wonderful menus that change frequently. Basically nightly they change according to what's the freshest, most wonderful thing to dine with. Typically they're five courses with wine pairings. And then we have our Carriage House restaurant, which is in a reproduction of a Greek revival ballroom. James Gallier designed this building, which was created for Homeless House, but wasn't built previously. And then I rebuilt it. And it's open for lunch and dinner every day, seven days a week. And it's wonderful Louisiana style menu, seasonals. And then our new Great River Road Museum has a new restaurant. It's called Dixie. And it's all about quick dining, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, buffet, and your traditional Louisiana favorites. You had movies filmed here. Well, the most famous movie here until recently was Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte with Betty Davis. It was quite well known and she drove her car right down the Alley of Oaks to arrive at the house and then departed that way. It's a very famous scene. Just a couple of years ago, The Green Book was filmed here. There was a cocktail party right in the front of the house here. Of course, it won the Academy Awards. It was internationally well known. I was in China last year promoting Homeless House. When they introduced me, they say he's the owner of the house that was in the Green Book and we had several million hits because the Green Book was such a popular movie in China, which really surprised me. But it was a wonderful story and it was really well done. Your piano's in that movie. I have a Steinway piano. The great pianist played it in the movie and that was a wonderful touch too. Everybody wants to come play the piano now. You just added a bridge to cross the river. Our latest addition is a major bridge. It sort of looks like Monet's Japanese bridge. It's arched as it goes over River Road and it connects our gift shop to the river and guests can then take the handicapped accessible bridge over River Road so it's nice and safe to the top of the levee and you can view the river there. Coming in another year and a half will be a docking facility in the Mississippi River where the steamboats will be able to dock and guests will be able to leave their room, visit Homeless House and return all handicapped accessible wheelchair without assistance or a walker without assistance. It's gonna be a major change for Homeless House because we'll have a, a steamboat docked here every day with new tourists coming. So guests leave their room. You have lodging here too. Yes, we have a 21 room bed and breakfast or an inn here. It's very luxurious. It's like you're staying in the house, but you're not staying in the house. And when you come here, you have a lot of artifacts. I love collecting, I love shopping. That's kind of why I wanted to do this, to show how I think these houses would have been decorated and how they would lived in in the early 1800s. The furniture is anywhere from about 1750 to about 1860. 
And you've just added a museum. Yes, the Great River Road Museum is a 30,000 square foot museum telling about life on the Mississippi between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. It's about the steamboats and how the people lived on the river, the battles on the river. There's a great military section in there. It's about the food. It's about Mardi Gras connection to the river because several of the Mardi Gras crews have their royalty arrived by barge on the Mississippi River to New Orleans. It's just a, a cornucopia of history on the river road and it takes several hours to see it in its Itself. So people are a little surprised when they can't do it in an hour or two. And the Musée Conti Wax Museum was also donated to the museum. And the wax items aren't done like they were at the Wax Museum. These become part of the exhibits. You have a Japanese garden. What is the story with that? Well, we call it the Oriental Garden. Most gardens at historic plantations are flat gardens because the land is flat here. And I wanted something that was different. So I wanted something that could have a hill and have a bridge and in waterways going through it. So an oriental garden made sense. And it's got a great big waterfall in it, but it's got a, a tea house up at the top. So you can go to a turtle bar and collect a drink and go spend the afternoon sitting in the tea house, enjoying your favorite beverage. And that overlooks an area that's the amphitheater. That's the amphitheater. We do arts and crafts festivals, art walks. The symphony comes in play sometimes. It's a about a 50,000 square foot amphitheater, all set with dancing fountains. I look at homeless houses, it's, it's sort of the Disneyland for adults. Yes, kids are welcome, they're most welcome, and pets are welcome. But this is for people who want to enjoy the arts, enjoy living, enjoy food, dining, drinking, whatever it might be. It's a place to celebrate. So do you have a website? Yes, we do. It's homelesshouse.com. H-O-U-M-A-S-H-O-U-S-E dot com. So if anybody wants to book a room or come on a tour, they can go to your website and find out how to get it done. They can do it right online. Kevin, I want to thank you for being on Celebrating Culture. And Homeless House is just a fabulous place. The food is incredible. And just the ambiance when you come here to take in, it's just a favorite for so many people. Well, thank you for letting the world know about us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Celebrating Culture. Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. Louisiana has fabulous museums across the state. It's definitely worth the time to drive around and do a staycation and feed your soul. 